Hello, I want to show you some of my math books. So I have two books here. The first one is Set Theory. This is by Felix Hostorf. And so Felix Hostorf was a very, very famous mathematician. And this book is, I believe, the first really popular book, maybe the first book, I'm not sure, but it's a very influential book on set theory. I think it might be like the first book to ever compile this specific knowledge in one place and, you know, call it a book. So it's influenced many people, including this book here, which was written by Paul Hamos. Uh, it's called Naive Set Theory. So this is more for beginners. So basically, I'm thinking, I'm assuming this was Paul's thinking. He's thinking, this is a great book. I love set theory. Let me see if I can write my own book. And he made a smaller book with less topics that's intended more for beginners. So you've got kind of like a beginner-friendly book, and then the book that really compiled all that knowledge. I actually have, I was reading about Felix. I actually have his picture here. Let me show you so you can see base. That's, that's Felix. That's Felix right there. Let me just zoom in so you can see him. Felix Hostorf, that is the man who wrote this book, which I am holding in my hand. Uh, Felix Hostorf um, was a very smart man. He did a lot of important things. He died uh, a very tragic death. It's very sad. It's really, really terrible. But he's also famous for um, some interesting things like Hostorf spaces. Let me show you what that is really quick. So if, I mean, why not? So if I have a topological space, if this piece of paper is a topological space, and you take any two points in that space, uh, there exist neighborhoods such that you can separate those points. So there exist disjoint neighborhoods about those points. So given any two points, you can separate them with disjoint neighborhoods. If you have a space with that property, it's called a Hostor space. And it's also called a T2 space. And it's named <laughs> after the person who, you know, who wrote this book on, on set theory. So I think that makes it extra cool um, to have you know, books where you know, the author of the book you know, his name is something you use in a proof. <laughs> it's like, because X is a Hofdor space, you know, it, that implies that, you know, it's something that you, you see a lot when you do topology, you know, you, you study Hofdorf spaces. And so to have a book uh, written by, I'll call him by his first name, Felix, uh, it's just kind of cool. So anyways, just random thoughts here. As a collector, this is, to me, this is, you know, a nice, a nice item. I think this is a good collector's item. Set Theory by Felix Hofdorf. Translated from the German by John R. Amen. Hmm. So the book was originally written in German. I don't know if there's um, translations to other languages. Uh, I think it's really cool uh, when you get translated books. I don't know, from any language, it's just interesting. I can't imagine the amount of work it takes to translate a math book. It's completely insane. Just a monumental task. Because the present translation of Felix Hostor's famous Mengeler is the work of more than one hand, and because during the considerable length of time in which this translation was in preparation, other duties, both personal and professional, have arisen to prevent the translators from seeing the work of translation through to completion. It has devolved upon me to make such changes in terminology as well as language as consistency and style would require. Hmm. Then here's a preface to the second edition. Let's look at the contents. So it has sets and the combining of sets. So sets, functions, sum and intersection, product, power, cardinal numbers, order types, ordinal numbers, systems of sets. Let's see if I can zoom in the camera here. You can get a better look. Not much sure if it'll come into focus, yeah. Oh, 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 there it goes, there it goes. Patience is a virtue, there we go. We got to turn the page here so you can see some more. The contents. A sip of tea here. I'm drinking a nice hot tea here. Nice, nice wintertime tea. Ah, yeah. Here's my, my teacup. Point sets and ordinal numbers. Mappings of two spaces. Real functions. Ah, it's really good tea. Really nice tea. It's actually a little bit cold now. Tea's a nice drink because it's got, a, you know, I mean, I drink a lot of coffee, so tea is, you know, tea is much milder than coffee. So I'll drink tea, uh, and it just gives you, like, a nice pickup sometimes. Sets and the combining of sets. 
It talks about the set of all natural numbers, one, two, three, etc. The set of all even natural numbers. The set of all squares, the set of all powers of two, and the set of all prime numbers. So it goes pretty quickly. Now we're on functions. And let's just let's just skip ahead quite a bit, see what happens. Look. Oh yeah, what's all that? See, so it's it's a little bit more advanced than what you would typically learn in a regular math class. If you take a math class in college, like in the US, and use a book, well, just most math books, this is true for most math books, doesn't matter where you take it. Most math books, if you look at most math books, they start with set theory. And there's like a little bit of review in it. But this is an entire book on the subject. So there's a big difference between what's in here and you know what you see at the beginning of you know a complex analysis book or an advanced calculus book or a linear algebra book where they, you know they usually have like some basic prereqs they might review induction and you know talk a little bit about sets and give you some definitions holes and cur and kernels wow this book is this book is thick got to give it a whiff one second i just just ah oh. ah oh, so amazing so amazing yeah I've had this book for a long time. I don't think I've, I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this book. I've had it for a long time. This is one of my older books. Hostorf book. You know, when, when I heard that Hostorf wrote a book, I, uh, I immediately, uh, I was like, oh, I got to get a book. Because, you know, Hostorf spaces. So, like, well, you can get a book written by the guy, who, you know, for which Hostorf spaces are named. I think that's just, it's just such a big novelty to me. I don't know. Interval images, dyadic continua. So, yeah, you can see it's a much more advanced book. Homeomorphisms. What's this say? Let's see. A homeomorphism between two sets A and B was defined as a one-to-one -one mapping. Okay. Y equals V of X, X equals Psi of X, continuous in both directions between the two sets. Okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. Topological spaces. So, and this is a set theory book, right? Let's take a look at Paul's book. So Paul, Paul was very famous. The internet is filled with quotes about Paul. Paul had all kinds of views. He said the best way of learning math for him, he said, was to do tons of problems. He would just sit down and do tons of problems, and that's how he learned. Whenever he wanted to learn a new subject, that's what he did. He would just start doing math problems. And I mean, that's good common sense. It's true. <laughs> it's 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 brutally true. And you know, that sounds easier than it said, right? You know, do lots of math problems. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Paul Hamos, what a nice cover, right? The University Series in Undergraduate Mathematics. Open it up. Naive Set Theory, Professor of Mathematics, University of Indiana. Nice. The preface. Read at least one sentence of it. Let me see if I can come into focus here. Every mathematician agrees that every mathematician must know it. set theory. This disagreement begins in trying to decide how much in sum. Interesting, yeah. How much do you need to know, right? And so I think this book provides, you know, some set theory. It doesn't provide everything. It's much smaller than the other book. It's much more inclined for beginners. There you can see the contents. Definitely better for beginners. If I can, there we go. The axiom of extension, the axiom of specification, unordered pairs, unions and intersections. So lots of little sections. It's a very little book. Zorn's Lemma. That's a fun one. Yeah, I should make a video on I don't think I have a video on Zorn's Lemma. Zorn's Lemma is something that it, it comes up a lot in a lot of big proofs in mathematics. So the axiom of extension. Pack of wolves, a bunch of grapes, or a flock of pigeons are all examples of sets of things. Paul Hamos. Pretty cool. So just basic math, just basic set theory. Talks about ordered pairs, unordered pairs, unions and intersection. Let's skip ahead here. Families. Families of sets. Let's look at that. Yeah, it says here if I mean here, if the if if A sub I is a family of subsets of X, the union of the range of the family is called the union of the family set of a sub i or the unit of the sets a sub i and our notation is right so you just let i run through some index set oh according as it is or is not important to emphasize the index set i yeah yeah a lot of times in topology you have index sets you have a lot of that huh 
about the Cartesian product. We have inverses and composites. What's this? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is important. Yeah, given a function f from x to y, let f inverse the inverse of be the function from, okay, uh, I guess the power set of y to the power set of x, such that if b is a subset of y, then, okay, interesting. Yeah, it says f inverse of b consists of exactly those elements of x that f maps to b. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is, right? Let me just you may show you, let me show you what that is. I can draw a little picture to show you. So now I have a pencil here. Here's a pencil. Let me explain that. Or try to. Let's see. So if we have x, okay. We have y. That's important. That's something that you learn. And then you have a function from f f from x to y. Okay. And um, you have uh, a set b here. So b is a subset of y. Then f inverse of b, it's some set over here. Okay, let's say this is f inverse of b. Okay, that's f inverse of b. And so what it is is it's the collection of all elements that get mapped to b. Okay, so. The set of all x and x, right? Because it's it's a subset of x, so it should be the set of all x and x. Let's use this definition to see if we can come up with the actual definition, right? Let's see. Such that, such that what? Such that f inverse of x is in b. Sorry, f of x is in b. That's silly. There we go. There we go. There is the definition. Boom. So basically. It's all the elements here that get sent here. So that's all it is. Because this means that this x got sent here. So it's all the x's and x such that f of x gets sent to b. Kind of an interesting idea. And um, this comes up a lot in mathematics. And doing proofs with this, you know, people sometimes have um, a, hard, a hard time with it. But yeah, anyways, show you that. So... Yeah, so the math in this book is good, and I think they're both good books. Naive Set Theory and Set Theory by Hostorf. Until next time, good luck, and take care.